we have capacity to successfully uh, deal with this challenge as a national issue because it's not fair or right uh, that one community or one province ought to bear the brunt of uh, a, a challenge that we're uh, facing as a result of Canada abiding by its domestic and legal obligations. Uh, of course, in the background, we're continuing to pursue the modernization of the Safe Third Country Agreement. I recently spoke to the Canadian ambassador in Washington and will be speaking with my American counterpart to negotiate a, a lasting solution. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, uh, we'll, we'll be chatting again uh, for the next phase of these discussions. Uh, with respect to uh, Mr. Polyev's uh, comments, if I can be uh, completely frank. Um, it, it's reckless and, and uh, frankly uh, not a thoughtful approach uh, to simply say within 30 days you close Roxham Road. Uh, what would happen uh, if we took such an approach rather than actually dealing uh, with people with dignity and respect and pursuing a, an option that requires bilateral conversations with the United States is you would simply displace the problem uh, to other points along the Canadian-US border. Uh, the result uh, would likely uh, be serious risks that would fall upon vulnerable migrants who are seeking safe haven in Canada, who would be forced to potentially cross through a, a dangerous uh, portion of the border, not knowing how the elements, particularly at this time of year, would impact themselves and their family. Uh, what we need to do is continue to maintain a compassionate approach that recognizes basic human dignity. At the same time, we pursue a lasting solution in partnership with the United States. I, I'm optimistic that the plan to develop a skills inventory to work with other provinces that are uh, more than willing to welcome workers into their communities and to negotiate a permanent solution with the United States is a much better approach. Uh, this is not time for uh, not the time for uh, brash bumper sticker arguments that seek to gain political favor uh, in a time of, uh, of a, a real challenge. It's a time to solve problems through adult conversations with our most important strategic trading partner in the United States. Thank you, Minister. My follow-up is, do you think the money placed into crossing the said Roxham Road would be better invested in speeding up other immigration avenues? Uh, so the good news is we are uh, making no uh, uh, shortage of investments to speed up uh, immigration processing. Uh, the argument that you're making certainly uh, is justified that we should be increasing processing times through uh, regular immigration channels. Uh, but the good news is, as a result of pouring more resources into the system, adopt adopting new digital approaches and reducing certain administrative barriers, we're seeing an extraordinary increase in productivity. 2022, uh, we processed about 5.1 million uh, total applications, which is almost double uh, the number that we saw in 2021. Uh, the reality is that we're now back to the standard processing times for new applicants who are seeking to be reunited with their families through permanent residency programs. We're also back to the service standard we enjoyed before the pandemic when it comes to the Federal Express Entry System. Uh, we're more or less back and expect to be by next month for work permits and study permits to the 60-day standard. We have a little bit of work left to do on visitors' visas, but these challenges came about as a result of unique pressures during the pandemic when the border was closed, but applications continued to come in and the oversight contribution that Canada is making to the response to the humanitarian crises in Ukraine and Afghanistan in particular. Um, build on top of those pressures, the fact that Canada has become the most popular country in the world for workers to move to, uh, we're facing demands like the immigration system has never seen. Uh, thankfully, we are seeing a steady and predictable downward trend in processing times because we want people to get into jobs more quickly, families to be reunited more quickly, and vulnerable people to be provided with safe haven more quickly. Uh, we're on a very good track right now as a result of the investments we've made. And since July, we've now seen a reduction in the number of cases in our system by more than 600,000. Uh, so with great respect, uh, the uh, resources that we're putting towards uh, uh, dealing with people uh, with, with dignity and respect as they seek safe haven in Canada uh, is not something that we need to do instead of uh, investing in the immigration system to boost processing times. Uh, you can boost processing times and treat people with respect at the same time.